He's a very detailed person. Yeah. So he doesn't say things for fun. He says what he means and he means what he says. So whenever he's giving us instructions, we need to be careful. Mm. But you know, like as, as young people, when um, things begin to happen for us, like the business begins to expand and all of that, we are excited about those ones mm. and we don't follow the details that make those things happen. My God. So if Saul had critically paid attention from the beginning, mm. I'm sure this thing would have guided him. Absolutely. It would have guided him to know that whenever he's beginning to feel emotional or sentimental, he will know that, no, I need to go to God. Mm. This is not about me. Not I did not me. volunteer to be a king. Ah, you didn't even... People who um, <laughs> go and... Um, uh, how do you call, Apply and put their posters and things, cry. Nobody's minding Nobody's them. minding them. You, you didn't go. You were, just, you were even right <laughs> away and there, you were you brought. Ran, and now you are fighting for it. It's, it's that is, quite... Interesting. <laughs> it's quite interesting. So in our typical day and age, mm. we'll see... Like, let me... I want to paint a picture mm. that we can now relate to. Mm. That um, from a young... Um, let's say, in ministry. Mm. I don't want to even use ministry because we understand the ministry one. Let's yes. use um, something practical like you are starting a business. Yeah. The secular I mean, world. Yes. You are starting a business and all of a sudden, um, God... It opens opportunities for you mm. to um, meet certain people mm. in in influence That's or right. in authority, and they begin to patronize you. They begin to see the value mm. in whatever that you are doing, mm. and then after a while, you see that the demand over your life becomes high mm. or it, it increases, mm. and people begin to perceive the value over you, and then they begin to make offers, begin to call shots, and all of a sudden, you probably you make a post on Instagram and then it just goes viral mm. and you start getting DMs in and out and people are making inquiries and people want you to come and speak for certain programs, certain things, and you are excited. Mm. And you growing up, you, you were in a place of, uh, in a place where you were with God yeah. and God was teaching you these things mm. and God... You, you spend time to pray. Mm. You spend time to fast. Mm. You spend time to read your Bible. And God is teaching you patience. Mm. And he's teaching you um, wisdom, self-control, responsibility, diligence. Mm. These are keys mm. to um, becoming a leader. And all of a sudden, the, the spotlight is now on you. And everybody is praising you. And everybody is looking for you. Mm. And you get to a point where you begin now not to go back to God That's right. and listen to what he's saying mm. and you begin to cut corners and because you have um, the power and the influence and the authority and, and, and you begin to do all kinds of things and involve yourself in all kinds of things and then all of a sudden you see that there's another person mm. that is also springing up, springing up. Mm. and then you begin to look at the person and the word is saying that focus on your competition and you look at the person, you begin to um, hire people to even write bad articles about those people. These are real life oh, stories. Yeah, that's true. Write bad articles, conspiracies mm -hmm. and start to, you know, cut corners even if you are supposed to do certain things and charge a certain amount, you short change yep. just so that you can lobby your way, network and connection and all these. These are Think these are like this is a practical picture our in our day, day and yeah. age, and you see people um, do do let's say post something on Instagram, and then you have people go and say bad things or bad comments and all those things just to bring the person down. Mm. This is like a vivid picture, so just so that we can relate. And mm. you say that you will say that oh, this is um, Saul's and David's life. In yeah. our time, it doesn't happen mm -hmm. that way. In our time, it happens. It happens. We see nations conspiring against nations That's right. and pulling strings, very demonic strings, mm. just to bring um, people down, mm. bring nations down, bring governments down mm. and all these things. And these are things that are very um, tangible mm. in our day and age. And I needed to um, just create that picture so mm. that we can also relate. Mm. As we move on, we will continue to create pictures that are very... Um, contemporary, mm. um, so that people can actually relate to these things that are happening. It's, it's um, very interesting because 
the competition is 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 so bad that like we've already said and i'm just yeah. trying to reiterate it again yeah that it, the time that you're supposed to spend to probably develop or grow your business yeah. you rather spend that time trying to look for ways to bring somebody down my god and we've already said that the sky is too big yeah nobody is 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 crashing out there so if you are a star you have your place and yeah. you will be good to go so we need to focus the focus bit is so important that it, see, and there's a lot of things that is taking away the focus of our, our generation. Absolutely. There are so many things that are playing on the social media. There are so many things that people are doing yeah. just to get us out of focus. Yeah. So it happens everywhere. And once the focus is broken, we've said it over and over again, you have no future. Mm. It doesn't matter what you are told. It doesn't matter what you feel. The future is very, very bleak. And we need to pay very, very close attention to that. Let's look at the bit about the disobedience bit. Yeah. We saw that Saul was very obedient prior to the coronation. Absolutely. When he met with um, Samuel and all of that, and like you said, the things that he was even told, he knew how to keep it. He knew how to obey all those things and everything like that. But then he becomes the king now, and now he begins to disobey the very person he had obeyed before he became the king. Yeah. And that is one of the challenges that we have in our generation. People that God uses um, to help us to ascend the ladder. When we get there, we begin to feel as if we don't need them or we've arrived or we know more than they do and stuff like that. So then we begin to disregard them. And like you're talking about um, contemporary examples, it happens in our days. So you yeah. see that God will use you to raise men and women and then... Out of nowhere, they begin to feel like, excuse my language, maybe you are useless, you are not important. And that, that is what is making the generation not um, rise to the level where God is trying to give us. Because, you see, we are worshipping God. But God, we've not seen God before. So God will use men. If you cannot do it for your fellow man, don't deceive yourself that you are doing it for God. Because what people will see is the way you relate with other people. So you see that if you look at the, um, the story of Eli and Samuel, it was very strong. And when I, I read that thing, I was, I was so shocked. Then it made me pay attention to dealing with men or women in authority. Yeah. Bible said that when um, Samuel was um, working for Eli, or was it working for Eli? Not working for Eli. In the service. In the service, yeah, in the the service of Samuel to Eli, having recorded it as worship to God. Mm. So it looked as if My God. Samuel was just, oh, fetch water for me. Go and bring the candle. Where is the anointing oil? Bible said as long as Samuel was in that life of servitude towards mm. Eli, having recorded it as worship to God. Mm. So I'm talking to a young man, I'm talking to a young woman who is listening to me. When God brings people of authority or influence around you, mm. your service or what you do for them, heaven records it as worship to God. Mm. If you are not careful, oh, but this one is just me and my boss. It's just me and my boss. And Bible living tells us how we are supposed to work. He said, work with your boss as working unto mm. the Lord. Where mm. is God? My God. So if you cannot deal with human being, don't deceive yourself that you are, you are doing it for, for God because that is the template. Yeah. Because why did the Lord who had an encounter with Paul on his way to Damascus did not give Paul the instructions? Mm. And he told him that go to the city. Mm. There is a man there who will tell you what to do. Mm. The Lord, why can't you? And it is not even Jesus in human form. This is Jesus in his glory. Why couldn't he give, or why didn't he could, but why didn't he give the instruction to Paul? Because he wanted Paul to learn humility. Yeah. Because there is no self-made man. Yeah. If God makes you all by himself, you will not regard anybody. Yeah. So the things that will unlock your destiny or your greatness, he has kept it in different men. Mm. If you can serve them, you are worshipping God and the thing is released. Absolutely. So then Paul had to go to Ananias. Yeah. 
And then Ananias even didn't want to do the thing. He was complaining, God, don't you know this guy? He's a very bad guy. Why do you want us to pray for him? And God said, don't call him a bad guy. This is my chosen vessel. Mm. So there is somebody listening to me. You are devastated. You are... You are frustrated. You are oppressed of the devil and all of that. That is what the world is calling you. Or that is what the world is describing for you. But what is heaven calling you? You might be the next champion for your nation. You might be the next president. You might be the next um, minister of state. Name whatever it, it could be. But you must pick what God is saying concerning you. Mm. So until we had that story about what God was telling Ananias, we didn't even know who Paul was. We thought Paul was the medra everybody was calling. Yeah. So everybody can be saying the same thing about you, but it is not true. Mm. It is a fact, but it's not true. Mm. And as believers, we deal with the truth, not the fact. Yeah. Because the fact was that Paul was killing the people. Yeah. But the truth is that he's a chosen apostle for God. My God. So enough of the fact. And the, you see, this, this, this Christianity thing is beautiful. It's not democracy. Because everybody was saying that Paul was a murderer. But only one voice was saying that he was a chosen apostle. And that voice overshadowed the, Everyone. the, everyone's voice. So it doesn't matter what you are say, people are saying about you. It doesn't matter what the world is saying. It doesn't matter what society or anything is saying about you. What matters is the counsel of God concerning your life. Mm. So we need to be very, very careful not to be thrown away or be discouraged by what men are saying. But we should seek for God. So the God factor is important. Absolutely Whatever they are saying is true because all the parameters align. Yeah. But the final thing is what God will say. Mm -hmm. So we are just encouraging one another, like my brother and I are trying to say here, that whatever happens, let's go to our source. Let's go to the source. When the people started to praise David, Saul was supposed to go to the source. Because he was hearing the truth. And the truth is that they are praising David. That means these people will give David the kingdom. But what is God saying? And that was where he began to compound his issues and all these things um, began to dwindle and eventually he became something that God had not made him to be. So we said that, that humility was injected in him when God gave him his spirit. So the moment the spirit was lifted, you saw that he changed to become another man. A very carnal man. A very carnal man for that matter. Mm -hmm. Now, the one that was one, once uh, upon a time hiding is now out there trying to fight anybody that is trying to take what he claims is for him, which is not even his, which is the Lord's inheritance. My God. My God. You see the way the, the, the whole thing is? Yeah. So that was the bit about the disobedience. So it looks as if before the coronation, things were moving out for him. And then he gets in and then everything um, begins to turn the other way. I want you to probably come in with the bit about the impatience. He was very patient before the coronation. And you even said it a few moments ago yeah. that he was asked to wait for seven days and he did. Mm. Now, why can't you wait for someone to come and perform the sacrifice? It is very interesting, like mm. the progression we've made so far. Yeah. And it is interesting to... I want to make this point and it's, it's very clear that power truly corrupts. That's true. Power has the potential to corrupt. Mm. And it is something that is very delicate. Mm. And as we are talking about, like the impatience bit, mm. we've seen him become very patient. Mm. And even before his coronation, That's before right. he was anointed as a king, mm. we saw the patience, the patience he exhibited in his life. And all of a sudden, we see this impatience and and I'm trying to think about the foundation or where this impatience came from mm. because with the story of where he was waiting for someone to to come and make the sacrifice and he went ahead to to make that sacrifice because he assumed that um, someone wouldn't come or mm. was delaying mm. This is a man with a track record where every time he asks you to wait, he comes. Mm. And so you you were you had no choice than to trust God. Of my, uh... Because sometimes as leaders, God will, will say something and will give you an instruction. And it almost seems as if it's impossible. Mm. That, okay, I, I know that this is where you are now, but I, I, I am preparing a place for you that 
you would move into a bigger building. That's right. And you are like, God, how? God, how? And you have no hope. But then he's building patience in you. And there's a need for us to be able to trust his word. Mm. And that is where the patience comes in. Mm. Because I, I know that God will stretch our feet. That's right. Just so that we can be able to trust him even more mm. when he does it. Mm. But in, in God stretching the feet of Saul, we found out gaps. And that gap was uh, that he didn't trust he didn't God trust to God come enough. through. Yeah. And then also he was impatient. Mm. And so sometimes you say that, oh, I'm, I want, I'm moving you guys into a building. And then you see a foul means to get the building. Mm. And you can easily say, no, I won't sign this to get this building. I know this is not God's mm. voice for mm. me. But we can be impatient enough, knowing very well that God has told us that the building will come mm. and still succumb to the dubious way of getting it. Mm. You understand? But if we will build that patience and we will build that trust and be patient enough for God to actually let his plan manifest, you see that the building will come to you mm. and it will come in a, in a more genuine and authentic way. That's right. And, and that will come with testimonies. Mm. But then we find ourselves as leaders when God is stretching our faith that we become impatient mm. and begin to take matters into our own hands to do things that God hasn't ordained or asked us to do. And it is crucial that we walk with um, the voice of God. Whatever that he says we should do and not do, mm. we should stay true to that covenant mm. and be obedient and, and, and have that um, patience mm. and trust in him to be able to um, see his things and his purposes manifest in our lives. You know, just um, adding to what you were talking about in line with um, the patience bit. We are in a generation where we are very impatient. We, we don't know how to go through the ranks. Yeah. And it's very challenging because at the end of the day, the lessons that we are supposed to pick along the line, we miss them. So we become half-baked, half-cooked at the end of the day. Mm. And you see a problem that probably you could handle at um, level one. Yeah. When that problem shows up in level five, the damage is, is unbelievable. Absolutely. So God gives us time. God gives us all these um, things to do so that we will be able to grow gradually. There's yeah. something we call organic growth. Yeah. Even it happens in social media and all of that. That's how come people want to go and buy subscribers and followers yeah. just so that they, the numbers will just begin to skyrocket. Instant gratification. That, that, that's the whole deal. But when people grow through the ranks, mm. it, it's, it, it makes it more organic. It's natural. Yeah. Because everything natural is actually the best. Yeah. But artificial stuff is when we want, want to do it outside of what, the way God has designed it to be. So just bringing a picture of what we are talking about in terms of um, Saul trying to do the sacrifice himself and not waiting for someone to come and do it because of impatience. It happens in our, in our days um, today. People are there, young men and women, trying to get into industry and all of that. Yeah. It's like we want to help God. <laughs> we want to help God and still give God the credit. Whoa. So a lot of people come to um, the church and then they begin to give a lot of testimonies and the testimonies, and God did it. But when they give you the detail of it, you realize that they did it and they are trying to put it on God. And God does not know anything about it because that was not God's timing. Mm. God is a God of times and seasons. Mm. So if you do something good at the wrong time, it's still evil. Mm. Because it doesn't come with the requisite grace that is supposed to power that agenda. So there's a young lady who wants to marry. And the world, you see, this thing about the people is very serious. <laughs> so the reason why a lot of young ladies and young guys are forcing themselves to get married is because of what the people have said. Mm. We are believers and there is nowhere in scripture that God put a, a, I mean, a time or an age um, limit to marriage. Mm. But the world and science and our little knowledge will tell us that, oh, when you get to a particular age, it's mm. difficult to have a child, it's difficult to do this and that and all of those things. So because of that, we are under pressure to help God to solve our problem. Yeah. So we pray to God we find a way to solve it and we come and thank God for <laughs> something he didn't do. Something he didn't so do. there's a lot of things that are going on in the world that God really 
is amazed because he wasn't part of it. Mm. And that is how come our end is always disastrous. Mm. There's a lot of all these challenges and battles that we are having. Most of them are as a result of our impatience. Mm. We didn't want to go through the ranks. And the competition bit we talk about. Because your friend had it at age seven, you also want to have it at age seven. But maybe you are being made to get it at age 12. Mm. And all of this is because we don't connect to God. So we decide what happens to us and when it should happen to us because of what our neighbors or our competitors are doing. Mm. And that is where we need to look at. So the people is a problem. So Saul was the people's person. Mm. Everything he did was the people. Yeah. But the people did not call you to authority. So it applies to our leaders nowadays, our presidents, our ministers, our um, assemblymen and all of that. You were appointed to perform a particular function. But it gets to a point now, all these things that you do is as a result of what the people are saying. So you are trying to satisfy them ahead of the bigger mandate. Mm. So our generation is in a lot of challenges, a lot of crises, and I have to do this and this. Who said it? Oh, and then the Latin people will say, and I say, Sana obia e yeno. Yeah. Say, Sana obia kano. Okay, so the Greek is that that is how everybody is doing it, or that is the norm for the day. Yeah. But the norm of the day is not necessarily what God wants it to be. Yeah. So because we are believers, we work with what God is saying. Exactly. Imagine you are in a university, and the vice chancellor has his or a set of rules, and you say, no, 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 the region I come from, this is not the way we do our things. You will be sacked from the school. Yeah. So you can't say that you are importing your set of rules from your region to another institution. Every institution have their set of rules and regulations that govern them. Yeah. So as far as you belong to the, the Christian fold, you're supposed to be playing by the rules of the game. My and God. I've said this before, no matter how fast Usain Bolt is, he does mm. not make the rules for athletics. Yeah. He would obey the rules and regulations of the International Athletics Authority. Absolutely. So he can't say that because... I am the fastest, the 100 meters, I want to run backwards. Mm. That would have been another sport altogether and not the 100 meters that everybody is running facing um, the finishing line. You yeah. see, so that is what we need to do. We need to understand that we cannot help God. Mm. And when we try to help God, we open up the doors and the chambers for the enemy to manipulate and come in. And that is what um, the challenge of Saul had been right from day one. So we should not miss the details when God is promoting us. We shouldn't miss the details when God is uplifting us. We shouldn't miss the details when our breakthroughs are coming. Mm. Because that same foundational details is what will carry on eventually. Mm. And then we'll make sure that we come to a fruitful end. My God. So the people is a problem. And I like the way you stressed on it that we need to even know how to deal with people when they are... Um, giving us accolades and praises and all of that. It's very difficult. As human beings, our feelings and our emotions make us want to just enjoy whatever is happening. We can even be glued hmm. to it to the point that now everything that we do, we are doing it for the cloud. For, yes. For the accolades. That's it's right. It's not really from a genuine place. Hmm. But hmm. we are just doing it for, to hear those things. Hmm. And, and we are slaves hmm. to, to those things. That's so, right. I mean, it's, it's, it's very powerful. I hope moving forward, probably we will be able to, um, in other episodes, mm. we'll be able to um, categorize these things and mm. God will give us more wisdom That's as right. to how we should handle these voices mm. and, and these praises of mm. men and how we can be able to excel as leaders mm. um, with all these things in place. Mm. So, I mean, it's it's very interesting what we, we how far we've come so and one thing that I would want to admonish is That's right. the fact that as leaders, mm. we should walk in love. Mm. And I believe that that is something that Jonathan, that is Saul's son, yeah. did. Yeah. That blessed him so much. Mm. Um, so we, if imagine Saul had loved David, David. Mm. that would have saved him a lot mm. because although he was anointed as king mm. and God had left him, 
God still valued him as a king. Mm. And there were certain things that that office that he, it was his office mm. that he he occupied. That's and, right. and God recognized it mm. as that. Mm. So even to the point that David had the um, opportunity to take the life of Saul mm. and he cuts his garment. Mm. And he, he 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 even was, you know, sort of like there was this there was a query for that. Yeah, he was like yeah. Even to, to, to even do that and not to kill him, yes. he still felt like remorseful. Yes, yeah. yes remorse because this is an anointed man mm. of God, mm. whichever be the king. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So God gives us that um, opportunity mm. to and that door to always come to him. Mm. And it is important that if we be, if we are conscious to operate in love, mm. we will operate in 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 the ordinances of God. That's right. You, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Because, like, you, like, love rules. Yeah. And, and we see that most of the time, leaders lose track mm. when they become selfish. Mm. When they, they begin to think of just themselves. Mm. And, and that selfishness, that jealousy, that envy, all can be replaced with Love, That's genuine right. love. That's right. And and I'm I'm admonishing um, the people mm. coming up, leaders, that they should walk in love. Mm. They should walk in that love that God expects us to mm. walk in, so that we will be pretty much circumspect mm. in the things that God is asking us to do. Mm. And we will not deviate or derail from mm. the original course that he's asked us or um, he's entrusted us with. You know, um, just so that we begin to um, wrap up for this particular um, episode, we, we've, we've been looking at the transformation of King Saul, yeah. looking at um, before he became the king and then um, when he uh, ascended the throne and how certain things in his life changed. And Absolutely. we tried to um, pinpoint it to the fact that it was... Um, loss of focus yeah the moment he lost focus everything else found his way into all the vices started to uh, make way into his spirit the, the envy the bitterness the pride the disobedience and all of those things mm -hmm. so it's it's actually a very beautiful picture as far as the making of a leader is concerned cool. it's not just about the, the the steps to become a leader it's about what happens after you become a leader and the danger that is lurking around to make you become Corrupt. something, yeah. the, the, the corruption, to become something that God did not make you. Mm. Because the spirit of God that came upon Saul made him a very humble person, somebody who was very empathetic. Mm. But then it took another True. turn mm. when he now focused on the people at the expense of God. of God. So then when we are not careful, when we ascend the throne or we ascend the heights of authority or, or, or leadership, we are going to be focusing on the people ahead of God. So mm. people had very good concerns, genuine reasons why they wanted to be leaders or rulers, yeah. be it in the political corridor or in the secular business world. But the moment they get there, the agenda of God that they were supposed to um, carry eventually begins to dwindle then it becomes the people oh I, the people are demanding the people are demanding so you know what i was talking to a friend of mine who was a pastor i said he was he's, he's, he's a, a pastor, pastor yeah. the, uh, then we were dealing with the fact that if we are not careful we will begin to prepare messages because of what the people congregation want, want. Because there's a, type, there's a kind of message you will preach and everybody will be, begin to frown at, at you. <laughs> there's a way they will look at you. They will even, that, that time, that particular Sunday, the offering will suffer. Because of <laughs> their anger and the way they wanted to rebel at the message, if you make any attempt to raise funds, nobody will mind you. Mm. And if you are not careful, you begin to tow the line of the people. So the oh, next God. week and the subsequent weeks after that, you are going to be saying things that they like. Yeah. But you've not been called to Give them what they like. You've been called to tell them what God has asked you to tell them. Yeah. And that is the problem we are having now. Like you said, a lot of industries are producing products or coming up with um, items because of what other people are doing, but they are not following their unique assignment. Yeah. 
So to the young leaders that are out there, young pastors, young ministers of God, and all of that, um, the minstrels, don't make song because of what the people want to hear. You know, these yeah. musicians are now making songs because of what the people want to hear. Yeah. So it is not what God has inspired them to bring. Absolutely. It's what the people want to hear. Mm. So this people agenda is very, very important. So the greatest weapon the devil is using are not demons. It's the people. Mm. The people will easily force you out of line. Yeah. The people will easily force you to do what God has not called you to do. Right. So a lot of us start very well. But the eagerness to please the people and to maintain that level of authority fame and fame and popularity and all the benefits that come with it. You want to satisfy the people. But we forget that it is God that makes kings and he dethrones kings. Mm. We've forgotten the fact that the heart of the king is in the hands of God and he will turn it to where he willeth. Yeah. But now we are trying to look for the man to favor us. Mm. You know, there is even this imagery about how um, the kingdom of God works. Yeah. Bible said, if God, um, I mean, God said, if I be exalted, I will draw all men mm. to myself. So if you want the people to begin to gather around you, or if you want to have the numbers, what you need to do is to exalt God. You know why? The people are all connected to God. Mm. And it's like you are in the middle. Yeah. And there is a big circle around you that every human being is connected to God. So the further you push God up there for everybody to see, mm. you see that it's like a net. Yeah. Then the people begin to get closer to you. And that is what we don't know. But rather we are focusing on the people and we are not exalting God. Mm. So the higher we push God, the more people that we bring to the kingdom. So I think it's about time we work very hard and deliberately labor to make sure that it is God's agenda right. ahead of everything. Because it's very easy. And it, it, it is easy to start. Well, you know, when the anointing comes, it comes with a lot of energy and exuberance and you are on fire. But the danger is the ability to continue and even end. Because it's not about the fact that you've gone to the altar today to confess your sins and accept the Lord as your personal savior. As long as you are still living on this earth, there is work to be done. Mm. So he said, them that will endure till the end, they will be saved. And the previous um, episode, we were talking about the fact that the woman who was caught in the act of adultery, as if Jesus will say that your sins has, have been forgiven, so you will go to heaven. In the end, he said, go and sin no more. Mm. That means from that time she departs from Jesus till the rapture or the world will come to an end, she has work to do. Yeah. So it's the continuity. Is the continuity. So I just want you to now probably kind of sum it up for us, bring out the very salient um, points, the things that we've been talking about this few uh, moments um, as far as the transformation of King Saul is concerned, how things shifted, yeah. what happened and um, how the progression um, has been so that we would kind of highlight it for our viewers before um, we draw the curtains for today. Absolutely. So... I believe we spoke um, extensively mm. on the journey mm. of Saul That's right. becoming a king. Mm. And then after the things that he did, the fact that he lost focus mm. and shifted it to rivalry, shifted it to competition, mm. and how that disrupted his entire uh, role That's as right. a king of Israel. Mm. And I was just reading stories, the stories, and we, we, we did talk about the fact that it's a crack. Mm. The focus is a crack mm. and it allows a lot of things like jealousy, envy, fear into um, their lives mm. or lives of leaders. But then I'm, I'm beginning to wonder, because it looks as if he spent more of his life and his, his entire course mm. as a a leader fighting David. That's true. Which is very detrimental to his life and to his legacy. Mm. And at the end of the day, he still lost. Mm. He lost everything. Mm. And it's very worrying that could we could God trust us with leadership positions or positions of um, authority mm. and we miss it like that. Mm. 
and we missed it so carelessly. Mm -hmm. And it is very dangerous because how then that can we say that for, for the first three years of your life or as a leader, you are doing well and all of a sudden the rest of your life you are fighting something that was a fixed fight. That's right. You understand? And that caused us to caution that we should be able to always find our way back. Mm. Even if you should lose track, mm. find your way back, mm. way back to um, the secret place mm. that is with God and, and be able to handle the voices, the people, and all those things. Um, something I want to also talk about sure. is, is the fact that there is always a need for guidance. Mm. Now, we realize that God was talking to Saul mostly through Samuel. That's right. And at a point, because of Saul's pride mm. and disobedience, he lost the connection with Samuel. Mm. And he still needed that. And so we realized that at a point, Saul began to consult mediums mm. for direction. Mm. And that even further on went on to <laughs> displease God even the more. That's right. That means that as leaders, we really need to tap into now, presently, the presence of the Holy Spirit in mm. our lives. Mm. Because the, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life is somewhat to soul. That's right. And we cannot overemphasize because he's the one that will download keys and codes right from heaven mm. to us. Mm. And that intimacy with the Holy Spirit, that intimacy with God is what will direct the course of our lives. That's right. And I, I don't know how to say it, but then I did mention it in the previous episodes that as leaders, we need to be like this with the Holy Spirit mm. so that we can be able to download what God wants us to do mm. for his people. Mm. And we will be able to also download the things that we need to prepare ourselves for mm. the, the different levels or cadres that God is taking us to. Mm. Because we've come to learn from the beginning that the stage where the light falls on us doesn't mean that we've accomplished. That's right. The fact that we have influence mm. doesn't mean that we have attained a position of impact. That's true. Or we haven't reached the point where God is calling us to. Mm. The influence, it only allows ease to be able to it's just like um water that is helping us seal our boots to our destination that's right it is just a platform that allows us to reach mm. um, our destination or to reach our purpose mm. with ease so it is not that once we attain a place of influence or when the light falls on us it means that we've reached where we are supposed to mm. go it is now time for us to work. Mm. When the light came on Samuel, when he was called um, in front of the people of Israel and he stood up tall, that was when the light was on That him. was Saul, you mean? Um, um, Saul. Mm. Now is the time for him to now work mm. and prove himself mm. and now work to fulfill the agenda that God has placed on him That's and right. on his life. Mm. And I think that to a large extent, Saul missed it mm. and was now lurking in the shadows of David. Mm. And, and, and we cannot afford to be in the shoes of Saul mm. at any point in our leadership life that God is calling us to become leaders and then we are just um, losing it and focusing on um, unnecessary things mm. as, as leaders. Mm. And so on in all, we are praying that God will give us wisdom mm. and will give us the ability that whenever we shift focus, mm. we, we march right back through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And then we should also have a secret place that we go to God and cry to him, God, your boy has come. Mm. Your boy has come. They are saying this about me, but that is not important. What are you saying That's about right. me? That is what I need to know. Mm. Am I on course? Mm. Am I on track? Am I 
carrying the vision as I'm supposed to? Mm. Am I taking care of the inheritance you have given me mm. as I'm supposed to? And that is the core of leadership, that we connect with God or we connect to God and find direction for his people. Mm. We connect to God and seek um, direction as to what we should do mm. as a people so that we don't end up even um, leading astray the people of God. Mm. Because we find out that leaders can lead the... Um, shepherds can lead the, the sheep, sheep astray. astray. Mm. And we don't want to be such leaders. Mm. We want to be leaders that are in sync with the spirit and the voice of God, mm. leading his people to the um, still waters, leading his people to a place of um, abundance, a place of flourishing, a place of increase, a place that God has destined for for his people to be. Mm. Um, it's um, it's quite interesting, and I think I've, I've, I've just en um, enjoyed the Saul bit today, but what we focused on today was the transformation of King Saul. Yeah. And it's got to do with the corruption of power. Yeah. So, how power can corrupt? So then we've okay. seen the life before he mm. became king and yeah. how things turn out after he became king. And that's typical of corruption of power. Yeah. So next week, if God permits and Jesus tarries, we'll be moving to another side of the case study of Saul as far as leadership is concerned. And that's what we are going to be looking at, the abuse of power. We are going to be um, mm. picking the lessons or the things that um, caused Saul's downfall. Yeah. So today is... Um, it's, it's just focused on the corruptions that come with power when people assume the role of authority and all of those things. But then next week, God willing, we're going to look at how people can abuse the power, abuse that, the they power have, that they have and how it happened to Saul and how everything um, came crashing. Um, viewers, unfortunately, this is um, how far time will um, afford us. It's been a beautiful time having you to join us. We don't take it for granted at all that you made time to um, stay with us all these um, moments as we were talking about the transformation of King Saul. I just want to use this opportunity to encourage you if you are a first-time viewer, and probably you, you've been a, re a regular viewer as well, to subscribe to our channel. This is Theophilus Lamte Ministries on YouTube and Facebook. This is the program that being the help I needed. Um, it's popularly known as Adult Education and Bible Studies. So viewers, like I always say, I just want to encourage you to share the link to a friend, a family, a loved one. This is our, our act of worship. You don't know who this uh, message might be blessing. And like you, you, you saw it, it's not just um, Bible. The Bible applies to every other thing, even the work you do, industry, ministry, um, entrepreneurship, and all of those things is it, still applicable. So do what to send it to somebody, invite a friend, and tell them that this is adult education and Bible studies. I'm just trying to add a little weight to the things we did when we were in um, the, I mean, little children in um, Sunday school. And so um, till we meet again next week, I just want to say a quick prayer before we sign out for today. Heavenly Father, I want to bless your people. We thank you for the hearts and minds that are gathered today. Let your word go forth unhindered. Let it be one that will bring deliverance unto people. Let their burdens be lifted. Let the yokes be broken off their shoulders and by all means receive all the praise in heaven. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Till we meet again next week, this is Theophilus Lamte together here with Koku Dako Jima. And we say that enjoy the rest of your week and stay blessed. Bye-bye.